we're going to focus today on the actual conclusion of your essay. And uh, uh, you'll see that that's a lot like the introduction, so it'll sound familiar. Okay, the concluding paragraph of an essay has a similar structure to the introduction, except in reverse. It starts with a thesis state, a statement, a restatement of the thesis, followed by one or more sentences that broaden the subject and ends with a clincher. Remember, this is kind of like the very, very reverse order of what we had before. Um, the thesis statement, which is your most important sentence in your essay, uh, in the introduction, it came last, but in the conclusion, it comes first. And you remember the hook uh, in your introduction, the hook came first, and then in the, um, in the conclusion, the, the sort of like hook, the clincher comes last. Now this is what's called a mixed metaphor because we started off with a fishing metaphor of catching a fish with hook. And then instead of ending with landing the fish, which is what we should have done, we end with the words clincher, which I don't even know what that's referring to, but usually it's connected to uh, a salesman job. So that's the metaphor we have here now. You're, 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 this is your last statement to convince the person to, to agree with you. And then you can stamp sold on their contract collect your money, and then they can go away with the product. So that that's, it's kind of weird. We mixed metaphors, but that's what's going on. So just wanted to see that the reverse happens. And the other thing, those sentences that are in between the hook and the um, thesis in the introduction are the, are the narrowing sentences because we started very general and like talking maybe about the world and then we shrink it down to uh, the, by the time we get to the thesis, we're just talking about the the city, maybe of Vancouver, and then in the middle it might be like the province or something, something in between size. So we're narrowing it down, and then the reverse happens in the conclusion. In the conclusion, you start super specific with your thesis statement, and that's just telling you what all the body paragraphs are going to be about, and then it's your time to broaden it out. So that's why we have broadening sentences where we broaden the subject out, make it larger now uh, to show how it fits in the larger scheme of literature or the world or something like that. And then we finally have the broadest sentence would be your clincher, the one saying what's why this is the most significant and why you should believe it. Okay, so that that's how that works. Uh, I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to be getting you to write two conclusions yourself, but we're going to split it into its separate parts to see how that works. So here's here's my topic. I picked the topic Hamlet. Now we're reading Macbeth, so you will have to write your conclusion in reality on Macbeth. And then Hamlet is another one of Shakespeare's plays. So now I'm going to start, but you are actually starting with the original thesis statement. So I'll be giving that to you. So rewrite the following thesis as a thesis restatement. Here's the original thesis, the one I would be giving to you. Hamlet is Shakespeare's best play because of the characters, poetry, and plot. Notice how these three things are parallel, characters, poetry, and plot, and we can't mess with those things. We could use synonyms for them, but we have to make sure they're all the same structure. They're, these are three nouns. Three nouns. Okay, now I'm going to take that thesis statement and change it slightly to make it the restatement. I put all of these things, character, opinion, uh, poetry, and plot, and I put them at the beginning of the sentence instead of the end of the sentence. And that's one way to make a restatement, how to change it around. Okay, so character, character development, rich poetry, and then intricate plot. Now this time around, I decided to throw in adjectives, um, and, or I, I changed character to character development, but pretty close, right? And then rich poetry, that's using the average adjective rich, and ad using the adjective intricate, because I'm changing it a little bit, right? And then make it Shakespeare's greatest masterpiece. Okay, now Shakespeare's greatest masterpiece, that's my opinion. That's my opinion, just like, 
we had it here, best play. You're basically saying the same thing, but you're rewording the grammar, restructuring it, and also putting in other words like adjectives or, or other types of synonyms. It has to be the same order as your body paragraphs. Your first body paragraph will be about characters. Your second body paragraph would be about poetry. And your third body paragraph would be about plot. Down here, you are going to have the topic of education. Then you have to take this old thesis. Uh, education leads to better health, careers, and happiness. And then you have to make a restatement right here. That's your job. That's your very first job. Restate this thing here. Cool. Okay, Oak, that's your first job. Now we'll go to your second job. Here's your second job, part B. Broaden the above thesis with two or more sentences. So I'm taking the very, very specific points about characters, poetry, and plot in Hamlet, and I'm going to make that bigger somehow. Okay. Uh, so now these ones won't mention, probably won't mention characters, poetry, and plot um, because they're going to go bigger than that. This poignant drama, I'm using nice adjectives, is more than just entertainment. It is a deep exploration of human psychology. Okay, so now I've stepped away from just talking specifically about characters, poetry, and plot, and I'm saying how it impacts on us as human beings, and more to do with the theme, it explores human psychology. Okay, now you might not use big words like that. Okay, but I can. If you can, do it. Okay, doke. Now that was one. I, I went that big. Now I'm going to go even bigger, perhaps, through the medium of drama. So now I'm stepping away from Hamlet. See, this one was just talking about the one play of Hamlet. But remember, he wrote 37 plays. So now I'm actually talking about his whole 37 plays. Uh, Shakespeare asks, sort of, but I'm stepping into the whole genre of drama. Uh, Shakespeare asks and answers one of the most fundamental questions of all time. See how big that is? Fundamental questions of all time? So this is now really big. I've used a superlative. I've used the word most. So this is one way to broaden something out. You use some superlatives. Biggest, greatest, strongest, fastest, most popular. So using those are called superlatives. So I've now used a superlative to make the topic even bigger. And uh, now we're not just talking about um, Hamlet as being a great play, but we're talking about it answering the most fundamental questions of all time. These are where your broadening sentences go for the topic of education. You're going to write, um, you're going to get bigger now than just talking about health, careers, and happiness. You're going to say something else about education. Two more things that broaden the topic and make it even larger than it was there. It's so now we come to your third job in your conclusion. And this is basically your third or your fourth sentence of your conclusion. And you have to write a clincher. It all depends on what you wrote previously, whether the clincher pays off at the end. So here is my stab at it. In the immortal words of the bard, bard is another sort of term for Shakespeare. To be or not to be, that is the question. So see how I tied. I mean, I couldn't use this clincher in any paragraph on Hamlet. Um, I mean, in any conclusion, um, it, it fell after this one, because he says he asks one of the most fundamental questions. So because that sentence was there, then I am able to put the fundamental question, which is to be or not to be, that is the question. So see how it linked together. And because this is probably the most famous line uh, in Hamlet, if not all of Shakespeare, to be or not to be, that is the question. That might be pretty much, you know, the most famous Shakespeare line ever. Um, because that's so famous, it's a good thing to put. It's a good quote to put in your clincher if you're writing about Hamlet or even just writing about Shakespeare in general. Okay, so that's the trick that I used to make this clincher for my paragraph. So again, clincher ideas, um, quotes. That's one. I used the quote technique. 
Uh, another one is to use a but although statement, either a but statement or an although statement. Don't use both in the same sentence. That would be gra bad grammar. But do remember we uh, talked about that for the hook. Remember the hook you could use, um, although people don't read this very often, it's really the most important work of literature ever written. That, that's an although statement. Or you could use imperatives. Shakespeare's Hamlet must be read because it is the most important. And then big numbers. You can finish off with big numbers, like a billion people in the world today, or something like that. And those are techniques that you use in your hook. You can still use those techniques in your clincher. But again, those are not written in stone. Um, a clincher is a creative thing. These are just sort of like tools that other people have used in the past that have paid off big, and you can use them too. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, I don't want you to do all of, so there's your clincher down here. You have to come up with your own creative clincher somehow related to education. Now, that's that. That's, that was your first essay, um, conclusion you're going to write, and then you're going to write a second conclusion. This one was about education. And this one is about cell phones. Uh -huh. But it's not, it's not super hard because I already give you the thesis. You just have to rework it from that thesis and write one, two, three, four sentences related that. You have to create a conclusion. So that's, that's your job there.